Welcome, everybody, to Where Did All My Friends Go, a podcast about life in the music industry. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Pat Ternowski, from uh, Cities Never Sleep fame. And with me always is Bear, to, you know? From, hey, from yeah, that, no, that I'm, super, I'm still here. That's I'm super still here. fame. Shitty. Of, he, of means shitty. he means to say shitty. He means to say shitty. I'm he means like... to say shitty. He <laughs> means to say shitty. It sounded like you were singing a song then. I was like, <laughs> I was into it. I was getting into it. Already, this is the best intro we've ever done. <laughs> Dude, so <laughs> I love it. We we've got a super awesome guest that we had a super awesome chat with. Uh yeah. named Izzy Rain. Izzy Rain's a, a good friend of mine. Um, we actually go to her husband to record all of our of Brighter Skies music. Um, he's pretty cool. Yeah, Izzy has been blowing up on TikTok right now with her cover of This Is Halloween. Which, if you guys haven't heard that yet, I mean, literally, her name is in the title of the episode. So go follow her on Spotify, listen to her music. Um, she does a huge plug at the end of the episode, so stick around till then. We had a great great time with izzy and honestly she is in such a cool position with uh with the people that she lives with um uh they have a really good insight into the uh, the music industry so there's a lot of good knowledge to be learned knowledge you know what knowledge <laughs> you know what's better than this lamborghini in my uh, in my garage knowledge knowledge <laughs> gotta that the fact that that's like a generational thing from youtube like kind of bothers me because like <laughs> i'll say that to people now and they're like what i'm like okay i don't even need to be your friend but <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's it okay guys this, this episode is awesome and and also just want uh, but you know she's gonna join our band yeah uh yeah mm -hmm. we're gonna start another band another band you'll find out what kind of band and and the name of the band in the episode so give it a listen and make sure that you guys hit us up at unsigned pop punk on facebook instagram I think we're on Twitter, uh, TikTok, even like all of it. Make sure you go, you go, you fuck me. Make sure you, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. Make sure you guys uh, follow us and, uh, you know, tweet at us uh, or, yeah. or uh, find us on Facebook and just comment something. Tell us what you liked or didn't like about the episode. Like, I didn't like Bear's voice. Yeah, me neither. Uh, but I have to live Thanks with it. Thanks for bringing so, it up. So do you. <laughs> yeah. Um, that said, we're gonna get Let's, into the episode. Go ahead. Let's, why can't why can't I speak, dude? Reddit in it. What I can't. I'm leaving this in too. Like all this is left in because like I'm just tired of editing. No, that's not true. <laughs> I um, I don't even I don't even know where to go from here. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. yeah I'm okay. Let's get into it. <laughs> well, hey, everybody. Thanks for coming to the podcast. Today, we have a really special guest, Izzy Rain. Izzy, thank you so much for being here. Hi, guys. Hi. How have you been? It's been like a week since I saw you. Yeah, I know. Uh, great. Not much has changed. <laughs> That's, I mean. So hot. Uh, your hair's changed, though. Yeah. Guys, if you didn't know, and if you haven't followed Izzy Rain on TikTok, first off, go follow Izzy Rain on TikTok. She likes to change her hair. Uh, the last time I was, what, I was over there like a week ago, your hair was... It was like orange or something. I'm partially colorblind, so it doesn't. I, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably. And now it's like a really vibrant pink, or is it purple? Yes. I can I just can't tell with the uh, video. You got just as good as guests as I do. That's point. fair it's enough. Like, you know what? It looks freaking pink. Purple. It looks freaking dope. It I is like dope. It. Do people still Are, say dope, or am I getting old? No. Anyway. <laughs> no. We can always say dope, and it's okay. We can always yes. You know what? That's my next tattoo. I used to <laughs> I used to dye my hair back when I had hair, and that was. That was a, that was a time ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, much, it's probably much easier now, you know. Dude, this any. dude Pat had would... a beard down to his like chesticles, right? And oh, yeah. one day he just shaved it and sent me a photo and literally <laughs> caught me off guard. I almost fell <laughs> back in my seat, and dude, I wonder if I... that's what it's like when I shave my beard and people see it. Did I ever show you <laughs> when I um when I dyed my beard blonde? No. Yeah, but that I is going to be a text message that I look forward to. Okay, so for Halloween, I I go I go out and like it's got to be accurate, you know. Right. So I went as like bearded Aquaman, and well, okay. he's got a blonde beard, not a yes, brown beard. So I made I I 
You straight up bleached I, your beard. I bleached it. Yeah. <laughs> I bleached Did you do that, anything but... fun after it? Like color it or like put like glitter in it? I don't know. Bleach. No, bleaching was plenty. Uh, yeah. It took like two or three times. So, oh my God. And it was real intense, man. Oh, like, I mean, you. that's on your face. It burnt. It yeah, I was going to say that sounds painful. Yeah. I've done my <laughs> eyebrows, but not, you know, saving the beard, you know. I just <laughs> that smell doesn't like when I dye my hair, it has that like, yeah, uh, that, that well, smell. Imagine, that, imagine smell. that like right on your mustache, bud. Oh, uh, bud. yeah, you got to get the whole thing. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, enough about that. Izzy, thank you for being at the podcast. We really appreciate you being here. And it's really fun to have my friends on the podcast. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. Yeah. So tell us about yourself. Uh, give us a little intro into who you are, what you do. Um, I know that you just released, uh, uh, I think you just released another song, I think. Or did I? Did you just uh, tell me about that? You might have just told quite. me about that and, um, and I'm projecting. It's been actually a little bit now, about a year, I think, since the last time I released anything. Um, All right. So tell, tell us actually, about it. Tell us about it. <laughs> it was um, the only reason I've actually blown up on TikTok, which makes no sense whatsoever, but it's the cover for This is Halloween. Yeah. And it's me and a bunch of other featured people on it. Yeah. Um, and you did that a while ago though, right? Yeah. It was last year, mm-hmm. October. And for some reason, April Just, of yeah. this month, it <laughs> decided to blow up. So it's getting close to Halloween. People are just prepping, getting ready. That's true. Yeah. That's a, that's a, it's a wave you could ride real quick. I know. That's awesome. They're just tired of the heat. Me too. We're all ready for fall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I just ready it. for Halloween in general. It's my favorite yeah. time. No, I think it's because I got to, <laughs> I get to brag a little bit. I got to hear <laughs> the the next one that you're doing. Oh yeah, and it <laughs> slaps, dude. Like it's slap. I'm not. I, I can't say what it is, but it slaps. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely grateful to be in the situation I'm in with, uh, you know, the people I live with mm-hmm. and their writing and production skills and all that fun stuff. So yeah, it's makes things quite easy yeah (laughs) what 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 really got you started in music oh uh well i don't know it's kind of a weird story actually so my dad is like a you know hair metal drummer and so music's kind of already been in my life for a long time however i was the kid who was like i don't want to be like my parents so i didn't listen to any form of rock music until like Panic at the Disco came out. <laughs> that's an odd place. <laughs> like from, in your life yeah, right now, there's an odd place for you to be right now, with living with who you live with. Yeah, no. And having that mindset. <laughs> but that's I mean, hard. I've always, I've always wanted to do music. I just switched from like R and B music to, you know, being pretty much a power vocalist and like a more rock type, like type music or style. At least yeah. for the most part. But that's yeah. awesome. I mean. It, Kind of sums it up. And the Enter Shikari music video, Sorry You're Not a Winner, was my uh, actual switch in my brain to like mm. act to want to be like in a band. So, right on. I mean, know, like if you had to pick any, that'd be the one. Too, you that that is, to, but... that's that's a good band yeah. right there. It, it really is. <laughs> okay. Well, with that all said, oh, yeah. um, you know, I know <laughs> we had talked about. <laughs> I know we had talked about uh, TikTok like a little bit just a second ago. Um, but, you know, that's actually one of the reasons why we we were like, oh, hey, she makes music. This is freaking sick. Um, and like TikTok is just. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, honestly, it like in a few of our podcasts, uh, it's been a topic of conversation specifically mm-hmm. because the people that we've had on have done really well on TikTok. So mm-hmm. with this, we want to we want to talk to you about what your version of the, you know, quote unquote success story is for your TikTok. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, my answers are going to be pretty boring. Probably. <laughs> um, I have almost nothing to do with it. Um, so the whole secret uh, of success in TikTok, I got nothing for you. It was pretty <laughs> much, um, well, so obviously you can make your sounds available on yeah. TikTok for people to use. And um, so like, it'd been quite like, at first it was like a couple hundred people were using the Halloween song for their videos and stuff here and there. And that was cool. But then there was this one 
girl specifically, um, I should have pulled up her name beforehand. I know you're going to ask, uh, <laughs> but, uh, she's great and I'm being terrible right now, but, um, she shared my, so most of the people that had done it, they did it in without like saying like, Oh, go check this person out or whatever. But this girl specifically just was in her car and she had a pretty decent following at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, she was like, you know, I have to say it. This is such a good version. Like everybody needs to check this out. And I'm not joking. It went from zero to a thousand, like to a million, yeah. actually. Like I went from having like 72 monthly listeners to having 30,000 in yeah. a, less wow. than a month. That's it was crazy. Awesome. So then, you know, it's just like the snowball effect. Everything kind of mm-hmm. just went from there. <laughs> yeah. So. And you know what? I think, it, how do I say this? To anybody out there that's listening about, you know, trying to find the secret to TikTok, trying to find the secret to success or that <laughs> that one gold nugget, the answer is it's not out there. No, you just do. Keep, keep doing you. And like, and you've probably heard this a million times. And honestly, it's probably discouraging. You know, like when somebody <laughs> says, keep doing what you do, keep being yourself. It's like, well, what the fuck? That's what I've been doing this whole time and nothing's working. <laughs> yeah, like, there's, I, there's I've so been many there. things. Like, but that's the honest to God truth. There's no secret. There's no, you know, there's no uh, like hidden gem, gold nugget. There's no freaking, you know, treasure at the end of the rainbow. Just do you stay true to who you are and keep grinding. It's, mm-hmm. it's that simple yeah. because most people's success stories are, there was this one time. Yeah. Right. And that F- one time can. is, yeah. <laughs> well, and that one time isn't going to happen if you stop or if you just stay stagnant. So just keep yeah. doing what you do. And I know that might sound discouraging to you guys out there, but just keep going. It, it, it'll work. It will. Um, Pat. Yep, I'm gonna have you take the next question because I, I want to hear I, your voice. I was gonna do it. I was ready. I was gonna go. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I see that you do like uh, vocal covers uh, as as well. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of other artists now doing this lately as well. Do you feel like this is a good tool for up and coming artists to like utilize? Um, I think that, uh, at least for me, the reason I do vocal covers, and I would imagine a lot of other people do, it's not necessarily like, oh, this vocal cover is going to be like the thing that gets me big. It's that you're giving consistent, like, content. Right. And so that people are consistently saying, like, oh, look at this person. They did this new thing. And um, now you're subscribed and you're not forgetting or you're wanting to stay, like, notified. And, you know, so it's helping you ultimately, like, when you come out with your next song, people are already, you know, they have that attention span of going like every week I've seen this new thing and now their new music video came out and everybody swarms to it. And you're like, yeah. So that's kind of my intention at least. So mm-hmm. Absolutely. I would imagine most people are doing the same deal. Some people, you know, that's like their, their thing, you know, right. Vocal covers and yep. whatnot, but at least for me, that's kind of the whole point. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, bring it right back. Yeah. yeah. Coming off the huge response of your cover of This is Halloween, and I know we talked about this for a little bit, um, but do you feel like this has helped garner more attention to your original music? Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah talk, talk to me about that. Like, what, what is that like? So you said that you went from like 72 monthly listeners on Spotify, and now you're at over 30,000. And, you know, the, the big question is like, oh, can I retain those followers, right? Can I keep them listening to my original stuff? So from your perspective for something or for someone that that's actually happening to, like walk us through that. How is that affecting your original music? <clears throat> well, I mean, I would say it's just like I, for most people, you, you need that one thing that gets you like gets everybody to turn their head and go like, this is yeah, what like puts a foot in the door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So before that I had all of my songs had under a thousand listens, like everything. And I don't have that much going on. I have like, I think four on their total. Yeah. And, uh, but they were all under a thousand and then that hit. And now I don't even know where they're at actually right now, but it's definitely not that. And, mm-hmm. uh, but I mean, like I said, it's, it's good to stay consistent and you're going to want to like ride onto that whole wave. Hopefully, right. you know, that's why trying to, I, like, trying to maintain. Yeah. So with that said, I mean, and I- Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say, like, if you don't have anything to put out, then it's obviously gonna start declining unless people are right. like, everybody heard your stuff already. What are you gonna do? You know. Mm-hmm. So, so with that said, and I know Pat that this is gonna come out of uh, as a curveball because it's not on our Google Doc sheet that we always cheat with. Um, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> He's going off script. <laughs> so, like, with that said, um, and I know this is something that I've felt 
similarly, what kind of pressure does that put on you to release another song now? A lot. <laughs> like a lot. Like immensely, like I'll do whatever I got to do to get something. And I, and obviously like the people that I, I prefer to work with, you can only do so much because they are so booked up and right. you have to essentially wait your turn and mm -hmm. everything. But I am that pressure that you get in your brain is like overwhelming to, you have to do it now. Cause what if yeah. you miss your window and like all of this stuff, it's so hard to keep people's attention on something that you've been working on for so long. And when you yep. see like for the first time, something kind of just like, go notice, like very, very noticed. You're like, Oh my God, we got to keep going. We got to do whatever we got to do. And vocal covers are great and everything. And they're helping to an extent, but like trying to get out that next song is so important and specifically to me. So I would imagine multiple other people are the same way. Yeah. So it is very, very stressful. And I've been trying to like reach out to people, work with other people, do whatever I can to get the progress going mm -hmm. faster. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, and like you know, uh, I, I guess like I have an interesting perspective on that, just because of like, you know, you and I basically know each other because of my older brother, uh, Nate, being in Archers and all the stuff that they do because they put out really good originals, and they're pretty known for like slaying covers, right? Yeah. They do, they do, <laughs> they do really well. So like, I've been able to talk to him a little bit too about like the pressures of releasing a new single, and that's one thing that I don't think anybody that I've talked to about it has been able to overcome because that's, it's always that nagging in the back of your head. Like I gotta mm -hmm. keep going. So with what you were saying, it's from what I understand, you know, utilizing things like TikTok to do vocal covers or to do uh, YouTube covers, that kind of stuff will help uh, funnel those monthly listeners to keep, keep listening. Is that, am I yeah. like understanding a little yeah. bit correctly? It's sure. pretty much just to kind of give somebody something for the time being and not have them yeah. lose interest or forget because, you know, the human attention span is like <laughs> so <laughs> short, pretty there limited. It doesn't matter. If, if you're not on content, on content, on content, you're yeah. easy, mm -hmm. easy to forget about, easy to disappear. And that's so hard too, because now you have to like uh, develop a brand, you know, you have yeah. to like, and, and that's, that's an odd situation that if you're not ready for, um, it, it's going to hit you like a freight train. And, you know, something that I've, um, I've talked to uh, some of my friends who are in bands and everything. And, you know, the, the big idea is like, we want to get signed to a record label. Right. And that sounds awesome. That like more power to you. But the big question that I was asked once a while ago, that still like rings in my ears is, are you ready to sign to a label? Like if, if just, you know, you and your local band, that is playing down at your, you know, your VFW, what happens if, uh, you know, an a and rep is there going, I want you, I want to sign you, right? Like not saying it's going to happen, but let, it happens. I want to sign you. Are you actually ready for it? Yep. You know, cause how many bands are being shelved? How many bands are being pushed to the sidelines? How many people are like getting this dream quote unquote of signing to a label and then <clears throat> kind of just being pushed away because they're not ready for it. So with that said, like, what would you, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is trying to be ready for it now that, you know, if anybody's out there listening that has uh, a new TikTok success story, what kind of advice would you give to, that, to them about developing their brand so that way when a label does approach them, they're ready for it? Oh, did we lose her? Yeah, it actually does look like we did. Uh oh <laughs> Man, that was a good question too. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh no oh no well pat why don't you answer the question <laughs> uh, uh we'll get her back here soon yeah uh well uh what was the question <laughs> no, <I was> <laughs> honestly <laughs> uh just about like for, for you guys even for cities never sleep like it's that, tough, that man. branding notion it, it's tough it because you have to have everybody on board you know, and that's the hardest part because if you try to do everything yourself or it's if one person tries to do everything, it, it gets really exhausting. It's daunting. Uh, and it can also, you know, cause a rift also like w within your band. If if one of the if the one person is doing all of the stuff. 
Yeah. You know, cause it's just like, you know, you start to have all these thoughts about, you know, well, what, what do I need you guys for? Or, yeah, you know, and, um, I don't think, gosh, I don't think anyone's ever really ready for right. Like this level. elusive readiness that, that we can all of a sudden just like be good, you know? And, you know, as far as my understanding goes, like each contract is going to be different, you know, each, right. each version is going to be different. It's going to be tailored or catered to what you can offer the label or what they can offer you. Um, and you, you know, you get, there's gotta be pushback on some things and there's gotta be give on other things. And, you know, again, like we were saying before, there's no, there's no right way, you know, no. but and being prepared, I guess maybe might be the right term, like being read, like not ready, but like prepared for that opportunity to, to come to happen. I feel like it's okay. So if you want to be on a record label, like that's your, that's your gig, you know, that that's what you want. Yeah. Um, then you, I feel like you have to do all, uh, all the research, all the preparation as if you were going to do it all by yourself, because mm-hmm. if you don't do that, then you're not going to know what they're saying. And then you're just going to get trapped in like a victory record situation. Right. You know, let's name uh, drop that real quick. Cause of a date, a date to remember is worth more than but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I oh, mean, oh, it, we got it back. We got it back. There's lots of things like that. And those were a lot of issues that, uh, you know, lots of bands had, especially, you know, a few years ago that lots of bands were having those yeah. kinds of issues. And, Absolutely. you know, if you are just going on and signing any kind of, you're like, well, I just mm-hmm. want to be on a record label. Well, the, you yeah. know, they're going to Hi, take it. Hi. Hi, she's back. I did it. Okay. I have, I have, it's me. It's my internet. I have the worst <laughs> internet That's ever. all right. I had Pat so. answer the question, so you didn't miss much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Because uh, uh, yeah, you know it's, uh, uh, we'll it's really you... bad. That's that's all right. You know what? We just keep on trekking. And if that, hey, you know what? That okay. that in and of itself is a little lesson. Never, never, don't sweat the small things, everybody. Just keep it going. It just... um, just keep her, just keep it swimming. Just, just keep, keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Wait, unless I get sued. Anyway, uh, <laughs> So basically, um, I Careful guess my, my there, a s- summarized version of my question to you, Izzy, would be what's your advice for somebody who's trying to get signed to a record label? Like that, that that's their goal. How would you advise them to prepare? Because I don't know, Pat and I were talking while you were gone about, you know, you're never really ready. So instead of mm-hmm. saying how to get ready for it, more so what can you do to prepare for that opportunity to arise um hold on sorry give me one second no you're good um uh so what you what i'm so sorry my gosh i'm trying to make sure (laughs) internet doesn't cut out again (laughs) um but um yeah i put it on a different one so anyways um what do i think that you could do to prepare yourself on um, platforms to be ready if a label presents something to you like an offer yeah is that what you're asking that was that was phrased better okay. than the way i phrased it <laughs> just making sure um i mean obviously you gotta want to have okay most of the time at least from you know uh experience of seeing other bands and stuff i myself clearly am not on a label or anything of the sort but uh I think advice wise, it's best to kind of have everything already preset. A lot of labels aren't going to sit here and look for you to like, they're not, I hate to say it, but they're not going to go, I see potential in them. And, and just because you sound good, you have to be a good business person. You have to be able mm-hmm. to control your, your platforms on every single one. You have yeah. to already have like a really good solid reputation because they're basically giving you a loan and yep. they are like assuming that by giving you this loan, that your product is going to sell so good that they're going to make money off of it, including what they gave you, like interest off of everything. So as far as like keeping your platforms up, consistency is really good. I mean, like, even if it's like, I'd say for me, for instance, I wouldn't necessarily consider my situation, um, like a pro in that type thing. Like it's more, you would have more of a better, uh, presentation by showing consistency of like, you've been doing all of these things and you've consistently done it and you're not depending off of like other people or other outside sources to like 
do it for you because you already gained yourself so much of a following on your own and it's going to make it a lot easier for a label to basically make money off of you. Yeah. Um, so, and I, obviously as far as like the labels getting like, it's really hard to be the star child of a label. Mm. So you have to pick your poison on what you're aiming for. You know, you can't just go, Oh, I got signed to a label. And then that you won, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're trying to get signed to something that works for you, regardless if it's like, it could be the mm-hmm. biggest label in the whole world, but you are the littlest band on the label. You're going to get treated like, so <laughs> right. if you, dog water, yeah, literal dog you, water. It, exactly. So it's like what, not only what you can <laughs> sound so ridiculous, what you can do for your country, uh, <laughs> what you can do for the label is what, what the label can, can also do? do for you, you know? So <laughs> yeah, no, a- absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, with that, there's a couple points that I wanted to make before we move on to our next se- uh, segment. When, for anybody out there listening, understand that when a label approaches you you hold all the cards when it comes to your music until you sign that piece of paper you hold all the cards when it comes to your music so if it's something that you that you don't think is for you don't do it don't take no, it up don't. on it you hold the cards until you sign that piece of paper secondly um whenever a contract is presented in front of you that's when the real work starts doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what kind of contract. Doesn't matter if you sign to management. That's when the work starts. That manager gets to uh, you to a label and they hand you a contract and you sign it. That's when the real, real work starts. You know what I mean? You will never be able to sit back, relax, and go, "I made it," until you are financially free from all of it. It it doesn't happen. Make sure that you are willing to work your ass off to achieve what you're looking for and three get a freaking lawyer please don't sign anything without any kind of like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like don't sign anything if you have no like knowledge about like how contracts or legalities work please yeah. get a lawyer and um with that is there anything else any kind of advice you'd like to add to anybody out there listening right now when it comes to music uh, or trying to make it in the music industry I mean, it, figure out your goal, like ultimately, um, I would say that a lot of offers and stuff with labels, like sometimes it, it's beneficial for you and sometimes it might not be, you know, like say, um, for instance, for me, I'm like the worst, like at promoting my own stuff, like absolutely the worst. And it would do really good things to be under like a a contract of me paying out so much money or whatever for this label to help me with promotional type of stuff with my music, because that's my weakness. However, you know, it might not be the case. You can be a band that's like just 100% great at everything you do. And you don't need to put yourself in debt with a label and you can continuously make profit all to you a hundred percent and you don't need anybody's help. You know, like it's probably some, some bands it's better to not be on a label in general. So just Mm -hmm. know your goal, know your reason, and then go from there. Like, like think to yourself, like, what do you, what do you need help in and how would this label help you or be a disadvantage? You know, just yeah. figure that out before you make any big decisions. Cause the goal isn't just to get signed and now you made it. Like you said, getting signed to a label is strictly to help you succeed. If you need the help, that's it. It doesn't, that's all it is. Yeah. So it's just a piece of paper. Awesome. Otherwise. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. We're going to take a quick break uh, and go to commercial and, um, We'll be right back with our next segment. Oh, hey, Jeff. Oh, gosh, hey. Thanks so much for watching the video. I wanted to tell you really quick about a bunch of new merch we got. And we got these super, super cool sweatshirts. Got stuff on the back. We got these new hats in. Oh, man, they're so freaking warm and comfy. We even got these cool shirts. These shirts are cool. You know, all proceeds go back into helping us be able to support up-and-coming bands so be able to do this full-time. So everything is super helpful. We've got these really cool bandanas too. Check them out. www.unsignedpoppunk.com. Link will be in the description below. And we're back. All right, Izzy. Again, we want to thank you so much for being here. Are you ready for this next segment? Let's do it. This is where it gets really fun. If you haven't been having an absorbent amount of fun <laughs> already. Um, this is our obscure question segment. Segment, oh, man, 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 man. I'll find yeah. an air horn on splice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Pat, go ahead and take the first question. I'll take the next, and then you close this out. 
for sure yeah so like this is like i said this is this is where we we stop being serious and we just try to have a little bit of fun now <laughs> okay so, okay so first question super important probably the most important question you'll be asked this month do you think that bear and i should start a new metal band and would you be a part of it with us a new like a new like a new metal like, and, like yeah, a and new, you and you metal band a new <laughs> metal band yeah only if i uh play uh bass and get to scream there you absolutely go. uh You're what in. would our name be like if you had to come up with a name like right now what would it be ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. oh uh, gosh can i can i put one out there that i just thought of absolutely you can Scar scarf down scarf down <laughs> 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 All right. First haven't album been, is called Nachos. <laughs> haven't been sitting on that, I swear. Just came up to me. <laughs> just I just thought of it now. It was right now. Beautiful. It was right. so, honestly perfect. It is. It it literally is. And we're gonna have like a chicken scratch like metal logo. It, you know, mm -hmm. that's barely uh legible. Yeah. All right. When perfect. you're in a movie theater, which armrest do you use? I think the most important thing is which one is actually yours. Oh, wait, she froze. Did you hear it? No, yeah. Okay, no, okay. I like sat back. <laughs> okay, you're good. Yeah. When you're um, at a movie theater, which arm I... is yours? <laughs> she's like trying, she's just like over here, like visually trying to like figure out which one it is. Yeah. Well, that's a real I'm thing gonna... though, you know? Yeah. 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 Like, I, I'm scared both. of them. That's I mean, I move. sit weird in chairs, so I I don't know. I mean, let's say you go to a, like a theater like by yourself. This is the first time you're just like, "F it, I'm gonna go see a movie by myself." Said no one ever. I've done but that. You're gonna do lonely. that. <laughs> you know, and and it's packed, and you got two people, two a person on each side, like, and they all want to put both of their arms up too. So which one is yours? You got to oh. fight for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I I guess it just really depends on the other person. I'm not that picky. No armrest. I'll just sit all weird like a child with my hands and my face <laughs> while I'm sitting cross-legged. It doesn't really nice. matter. You know what? That brings up another great question. I don't know. I'm not Is... so demanding. You're not so demanding? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. Like, I will force my way. I don't even care. But that brings up another great question. Is uh, when you're on a flight, are you an aisle person with extra leg room? Or are you a window person with the with the armrest? I definitely like the aisle. Uh, I have to pee a lot. <laughs> so I don't like having to climb over people. So I want to be right there so I can just get up. <laughs> so, I got you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely prefer it. I don't really care about the leg room. It's just I don't want to be inconvenient. Mm. Well, that's very She doesn't want to have any kind of... No kind of pee scares, you know? Mm, yeah, I'm I mean, like, oh, sorry, excuse me. I got to right. get past you for the 15th time today. Yeah, then some, to someone's it. sitting there, like, watching their free in-flight movie, and you have to be, like, knock on them <laughs> so they take out their sorry. earbuds, like, well, can I help you? <laughs> yeah, because then you got, then then it's a whole other question if you go, you know, crotch your butt. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's, just so, there's so many issues. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just take the aisle. <laughs> right but, yeah no definitely aisle that's for every reason possible i got you Sp speaking of movies yeah. though the movie theaters have you have you ever been in a movie where you've been like verbally yelled at for talking or or have you done the yelling um i haven't been yelled at but i'm definitely loud like, like are you a shusher i'm very um, i'm a shusher no, no, I'm the opposite. I am, I should be shushed, is oh. what I'm saying. So you, you're vocal towards yeah. the movie. I, I don't. Yes, I am, Barry. Okay. To be <laughs> fair, there have the there has been a few movies, and like I can I can only name like one like off the top of my head where I have like like verbally, out loud, like said something to the movie because I was that emotionally attached, and that was Captain America: The Winter Soldier. When he's going like when he's like like running around and he's running around Sam and he's like on your left, on your left, on mm -hmm. your left. And I verbally went, You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole theater just laughed. I was like, Oh, that was a good one. Okay. That's that's what see, that's okay. That's one of the good ones. There's like this... I feel like it adds to it, maybe. I don't know, maybe the experience, not the movie. Fuck that. I'm not gonna add to Marvel. They know what they're doing. <laughs> There's this uh one movie I went to. Yeah, I've I've, I've had like at least 
Hello? Oh, what? Oh, what? You good? You got delay. Yep. Let's, let's do it. What, what were you saying, Izzy? That's not important. <laughs> no. We're good. No, no. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm waiting. Oh, oh okay. Well, I was just saying that uh, I, there's, I, like I said, I'm a shusher. Um, I don't pay to listen to, to you bear in a theater. Um, that's fair. <laughs> but, uh, there was the, you know, there's these little, little, little kids that were in, a in, in this one movie and we went to, it was a horror movie. Wanted to watch it. Wanted to be scared. I didn't want to listen to little kids be little buttholes. Um, so everyone was like yelling at him to like, shut up. Cause they're being super awful. And so I got up and I went and sat next to him. <laughs> and uh, i was like do i need to sit here for the entire movie or are you gonna shut up and i thought izzy taking two armrests was a power move what the fuck Dude, i don't know if i have the balls <laughs> that's it pat anytime i'm going to see a movie you're coming with <laughs> why so i could be like shut yeah the he'll fuck say up. <laughs> yeah i know he's talking to us though oh, shit. <laughs> right like he's reading yeah, us out <laughs> because you and i are screaming at the movie that's what's happening <laughs> i know at least it's at the movie though it's not like i'm I'm not someone who goes and i'm like oh let me pull up my phone real quick or like oh. stuff like that i just get very very invested in yeah. The movies like, yeah or like you're not having a conversation them, with somebody on the other side of the freaking aisle yeah uh, yeah no yeah. like for me if it's involved in the movie that's fine. Like if right. you, if like if you're like, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. That's fine. It, I yeah. It depends on what it is. I agree. I completely agree. I'm not like you know this old curmudgeon uh, that's just like, were you <laughs> kids? You shut up. You know, I'm not like that. <laughs> but it's just like if if you're being a little bastard, I'm I'm going to <laughs> shut you. Up. Um, that's going on a teacher. If you're being a little <laughs> bastard. I'm gonna shut you up. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've definitely you know, yelled, yelled at the movie before as well. So oh, fair enough. There. Fair yeah. enough. Yes. We're all, Sometimes we're all you can't there. like not yell. That's fair. Pat, are you ready for the next segment? Uh, yes. I forgot. <laughs> he, he wasn't. He I wasn't. wasn't. Re- I, I am. Ready. I am. Right? I've been ready yeah. my whole life. <laughs> Let me just pull up the Google Doc here real quick. <laughs> I came out of the womb and I grabbed my fucking little thingy and I was like ripped it and I said I'm ready. I don't like the way you said that, but you said it, so it's in there. <laughs> yep, that was perfect. Everyone yep. definitely knows what you were talking about when you yeah. absolutely that. When umbilical he he cord. Grabbed. That's what I was. Without that's what it is. Ah, okay, okay. that's what it was. Uh-huh. Umbilical cord. Uh-huh. Yeah, it. Pat. Okay. I grabbed my Good wee job. Willy Wonka and I said, <laughs> Bing, "I'm ready." <laughs> I don't like that. I'm uncomfy. <laughs> so, our next segment <laughs> is called Rapid Fire Questions. Okay, oh, so now right. I, we're shooting from the hip. You know, no thinking. Speak from the heart. Speak true. I will All ask right. you. We will give you options, and you just tell us truthfully which one it is, and that's it. All right. You ready? Yep. Okay. Pizza or tacos? Pizza. Blink-182 or Green Day? Green Day. Travel or stay inside? Travel. Introvert or extrovert? Depends on the day. Favorite shade of red? Uh, Ruby red. Nice. (laughs) Ice cream or frozen yogurt? Frozen yogurt. You're done. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can can you, like, justify that? Because, like, I need to understand what frozen like, yogurt yeah why, why yogurt frozen yogurt dough? over ice cream oh, yeah, i mean no, like absolutely. i like i like both but like why that one over ice cream uh i I don't have a big sweet tooth so if i get frozen yogurt it's usually like tart tasting mm. you know, like like a sherbet almost feel to it it's usually like the vanilla frozen yogurt definitely has way more of a tart taste to it i can't like sometimes ice cream's too overbearing with sugar mm-hmm. so <laughs> No, yeah, I feel that's like fair. Frozen that's fair. Fruit, you know? Honestly, like uh, that's that's good. I, yeah, I I get it. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> like, I, okay. Thank you. Yeah. No. I'm for your house. approval, there, Barry. No, Thank you're you. welcome. Like I, it's worth something. Apparently, he's like, well, you're insane. So could you explain to me why? <laughs> well, I, basically, like I was just sitting here, like I mean, because based I don't... on your final answer, you're a monster. <laughs> you're a monster. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> get out of here real quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those are some nice shades you got there. Thanks. Uh, I know people can't see this, but I just future... put on sunglasses because I'm embarrassed. Your future's so bright, you got to wear shades, bud. Aww. That was oh. both cheesy and like kind of sweet. Oh my god, you're so sweet. All right, well, Izzy, thank you so much for being on this podcast. We've had an absolute blast. Um. I hope you've had a blast and we'd love to have you on again. Um, like, so like right when you, uh, right before you release your song, you should hit us up. This could be extra promo for you because we're a really, really big deal. And the one person that's listening to this podcast, which is probably my mom also thinks we're a big deal too. So <laughs> if, you, Honestly, if you ever want to just promote your stuff, just let me know. Um, that Absolutely. said right now, plug your brand, plug your band plug your music plug your like your social media where can we find izzy rain uh should be on literally everything i don't use twitter but it's on there i don't suggest you follow me on that because i will literally never look at it but um it's all just izzy rain on everything um I mean, it, like Facebook, I, it's like my personal one and my music page, both are Izzy Rain. So you really can't miss it. You'll find one if you find the other. Um, there you go. Fair. Can't miss it. Uh, it's, yeah, sorry. It's, I, it's, just, oh, that's the other thing I didn't think about it. It's kind of weird. Uh, just make sure it's R E I G N, not rain like rainfall. So it's rain like rule. Like Izzy rain, rain like rule. <laughs> because <laughs> because that's all we are is miserable pe- peasants in your presence <laughs> i can yeah, oh, that, wow yeah you know your miserable no, I'm just kidding. peasants <laughs> in your presence man that flows i like that. wow that's yeah. a shirt i'll put that in my next song i took an english class in high school because it was <laughs> mandatory I think. <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure everybody took english you, right class like i'm not I special I mean, everybody has yeah. to take one like, right like who, i'm not just who's stupid. you big guy who's you <laughs> who's you all right um, again izzy we want to thank you so much for being on the podcast um pat this has been fun as always mm-hmm. it's always pretty fun yeah i think. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, he's fun. like he's like not answering Definitely okay, say fun. <laughs> yeah you just you just keep talking there big guy uh yeah well uh, some, <laughs> someone's got it if you're just gonna stay silent and make me feel like a piece of shit <laughs> you're not you're not well thank you thank you. you for your affirmation well, guys, this has well, been another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go? A podcast about life in the music industry. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll catch you again next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. Thank you to those who already are. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Music, or anywhere else you stream your podcast. If you're in the position to help us grow, head over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash unsignedpoppunk. Let us know in the comments below who you'd like to see on the show and what other content you'd like to see. Thanks so much.